As expectations rise for potential approval of the first spot Bitcoin ETF, with an SEC decision expected this week, soon as tomorrow, joining us now, Anthony Scaramucci. He's the founder and managing partner of Skybridge. Good to see you. Welcome back. Thanks, Scott. Good to be here. Is this going to happen? Well, we have every indication to believe it would happen. I think you have to remember something about the SEC. If this wasn't going to happen, I think that would have been telegraphed into the market. I'm not saying they're as good at telegraphing things as the Federal Reserve, but they're pretty good at it. Uh, and so some of the big issuers that I've been in touch with believe it, it gets announced tomorrow, Wednesday, after the close, with potential trading Thursday or later in the week. Yeah. You, you obviously have a dog in the fight because you were an early investor in BlackRock's product. Uh, why'd you pick that one? Well, you know, at that time, they were having, you know, Bitcoin was in the doldrums. It was a bear market. Uh, the team over there, uh, they, they were looking for an outside investor. And so my partner, Brett Messing, I'm going to butcher Robbie's last name, but I think it's Medichek or Medichek. Uh, if he's listening, I'm sorry for the butchering of your name, but uh, br my partner, partner, Brett Messing, met with him. <laughs> Sounds like a close partnership. <laughs> Yeah, no, sorry about that, because I, I, you know, I'm, I'm drawing a plane, probably the high altitude, Scott. But in any event, uh, we put we put some money in there to help them get it started. Uh, and the good news is, is I think they caught the momentum. And listen, they, they've been almost perfect on their ETF application. So I do think that this goes through. Do, do you, when you look at the players, I mean, we're, we're showing the list right now, Anthony, on our wall back at our headquarters, and I obviously have them in front of me. It looks to me to be at least a dozen on this list. Um, is that too many? Are there going to be more? I mean, how should we judge the number of players who are trying to get a piece of this action? It's a good question. So we we stood down. I, we, we had an application in in 2021. It got rejected alongside a Fidelity's application. And and I think that the, the, the 12 of them will probably corner the, the market share. And those 12 will likely, once due diligence goes through at the wirehouses, Scott, they'll end up on the platforms. But I think this is a seminal moment for Bitcoin because most investors didn't want to open up an account or store it on their own personal wallet. Uh, they would prefer the storage in a brokerage account. Uh, and the ETF allows them to do that. And so this is sort of a SEC approved wrapper of Bitcoin. And I think it opens up a window of opportunity uh, for the Wall Street, those 12 that you're referencing, to go out and market the idea to their best investors. How much of the run up in, in Bitcoin towards the end of the year? We mentioned the gains are incredible over the last three months alone. And it was, of course, the best performing asset class of, of last year. But more recently, let's just pick over the last three months per se. Uh, how much of the gain there do you think was due to the, the expectation of these ETFs? And then some now suggest that you could get a sell on the news. What do you think about that? Well, look, it's very hard to predict this stuff. I've been humbled by price predictions in Bitcoin. So uh, if there's a sell on the news, though, I'll be surprised because there feels like there's several billion dollars of market demand. And remember, those 12 issuers want this to get off to a strong start. And I do think they have bent up demand. Uh, but you're asking a good question about recent appreciation. Remember, Bitcoin peaked at 68 or 69,000 in November of 2021, Scott, when the Bitcoin futures was approved. Uh, and I would have thought Bitcoin would have gone way higher, uh, but we had a horrific year in 2022 where I think it landed around 16 or 16,500. So uh, it's been a humbling process, Bitcoin. Uh, we entered the space in 2020. We like it long term. We think Bitcoin could eventually be the same or up there with the market capitalization of gold. That may take a decade, uh, but it's very, very promising. And the fact that the SEC is going to allow this in brokerage accounts, I think this is meaningful. And you and I both know Wall Street. Uh, now that Wall Street's involved, they will sell this product uh, to their best investors. Yeah, yeah, there's no doubt about that. Um, what about the relationship with interest rates and Fed policy? If if the Fed is is done uh, hiking and now rates are going to start coming down, you know, obviously Bitcoin appreciated a lot last year as rates were elevated. How does that re relationship go forward from here, do you think? Well, listen, I think more liquidity in the markets is better for Bitcoin. The people that are studying Bitcoin and doing the work on Bitcoin recognize it as a digital store of assets. Uh, they see it as a digital form of gold. 
And so if there's laxity in the interest rate cycle, uh, that means there'll be more liquidity. And I think that will be better for Bitcoin. It'll find its way into more model portfolios. Uh, but I was in interested in the debate you guys were having prior to the debate. I don't want to punch anybody in the face, but I do believe uh, that you guys are going to be right on rates. If rates go lower, it's very hard to fight the stock market. I guess I'm just worried about the top heaviness of it. Anytime we've seen this level of concentration at the top, there's been sloppy uh, forward markets.